Traditionally, when we validate our code, we do it by running the code. We say, here is a function, maybe it squares a number, and you know, we say, okay, it squares a number, so the square of four should be 16. And then you run the code and you validate that, yes, that is the case. Or maybe you use a property-based test, see our video on that, where you say, okay, here is a list, I'm gonna sort it, and then we're gonna verify that it is sorted some that you know the resulted list is sort in sorted order or perhaps if you sort it twice it's the same as sorting it once and that sort is an item potent operation both of those methods of validation rely on actually running the code and fundamentally treat the function we're looking at as a black box if you have a test that tests sorting it doesn't know what sort algorithm it's using. It could use quick sort, it could use bubble sort, okay. Um, it seems unlikely it would use bubble sort, but you don't know that. And you're treating that as a black box. You know, we don't know the internal structure of that function. But do we have to treat it as a black box? You know, is that a requirement? That, doesn't have to be. You know, we have the source code to this function. We can render it into an abstract syntax tree, and then we can use other methods to validate that, yes, the code we want is, in fact, the code we have. And one of the primary ways of doing this is to use a type system. Now, if this was, and if you took a course in theoretical computer science, you will hear about the, Cur the Curry-Howard correspondence, which basically states that a proof of correctness and a type are interchangeable. So what does that mean for us? Well, it means that if our type system disallows things, we can use that as proof that our code is correct. So the nice thing about this is by leveraging our type system, we can say, oh, look, we know beyond the shadow of a doubt that this code is correct. Now, in general, when you're doing development in Elm, instead of doing test-driven development, you spend a lot of time doing what people are referring to as either type-driven development or compiler-driven development. It's really the same thing. Where instead of writing a test to run the code, you write a type to describe the code, and you say, okay, you know, we know this function takes these type of input, returns that kind of output. And we can use that type to constrain what the function can do. And you get a nice result because you can never, you know, while you can comment out a test, and you're not supposed to, but people do it, you cannot comment out the type system. The compiler will not let you. So when you're developing Elm code, and you're doing the standard red-green refactor cycle, you should treat a compiler error as if it was a, t a test error. You know, the compiler will throw errors at you. This is not a bad thing, this is a good thing. It's just like having a failing test. You just know you have some uh, more work to do. So when you get a compiler error, treat it as a, a test failure and work from there. The nice thing about this is that you can never comment it out and you ensure that not only is indiv every individual piece of your program correct, but that the whole thing is correct as well, including all of the dependencies and things like that. So this is a very big semantic mental shift as a developer from JavaScript, as you move from JavaScript to Elm, in that the compiler is gonna take a lot of the work off you and really catch a lot of errors for you in a way that you might not be used to. But trust me, you'll get used to it pretty quickly and wonder how you ever lived without it. Uh, I know I did. So anyway, that is a bit about the Elm compiler and future videos will show this with some, more, with some actual examples. Uh, if you have questions, please leave a comment below. And if you liked this video, please subscribe and share it on your favorite social media platform.